One of, if not my biggest pet peeve in the crypto space is when you find people buy an altcoin and then have to tell the whole world about why this one altcoin is going to be the next Ethereum killer or top 10 project. Everyone always does because I guess they have a vested interest into the success because the more successful the project, the more money they can make. But the problem is you never see anyone talk about the reasons why they don't like an altcoin or what might make them want to sell it. Buying makes total sense, but I think most people that sell altcoins typically sell because their favorite influencer stops talking about it. But I have sold altcoins recently that I have been promoting for God knows how long, about two years now, because I still think they're quality projects, some of the best, if not the best in the entire space, but they lack one very important property that I'm going to teach you today and I'm going to give you a status update on how those coins have performed over the last one and a half to two months and how the coins I've moved into have performed versus those. And again, making sure you are aware of the reasons why. So of course, look, if you do learn something new in this video, which is of course the intention behind it, I want you to drop down there and give me a like, help support all my work. But importantly, I want you to go right near it, wherever it is down here, and hit subscribe so you can achieve your crypto goal. Now, before we start, I've got to say for everyone on my ass saying to me, Kyron, you should never sell the coins that you buy, right? Don't sell the coins that you buy because you got to have conviction. Oh, you're lacking conviction. You're selling the coins you bought 12 months ago and you put all this research in and then you're buying ones that are three, four, five X since. It's easy to slap a label like that onto every situation you come across. You aren't gonna always sell out of the coins you aren't optimistic on because of new variables, which is a massive part of why I sold these coins, and jump straight into projects that you want to get into at dirt cheap prices. It doesn't work like that, but you also have to apply enough logic to that process to where you aren't actually buying when it is a really bad time to buy. You obviously wanna buy at a level that will still help you achieve your goals with these coins. Now, keep in mind, the coins I've sold here, which I'm going to explain in a bit more detail, are ones that I, again, was actually brought into the industry loving. These are the coins that will do well, as I mentioned here, in the real world. These are actually providing real utility. They've got real business clients, some of the biggest names in the world working with them. And yet it's the projects that I've moved into that have nowhere near this level of actual utility that will outperform these for this cycle. So let me talk a little bit more about this uh, philosophy and this theory, right? What are these projects missing? Well, first of all, they're missing buzz. They're missing the degen interest. Now we use this word called degen. It's not a, a word I'm trying to use to insult people or the word dumb money. These are the people that come in and kind of just throw their money around and don't really think otherwise, right? They're the ones that are you know, right into all the you know, hyper mean coins and don't look elsewhere. And it's okay if you like that. I'm not throwing shade at you. I'm just saying that's what even these people classify themselves as. And DGENs are the ones who ultimately end up buying or have the most money invested into these coins, all right? DGENs are the people that are investing around 80 to 90, maybe even more percent into old coins for this cycle, right? These are the guys that are looking at a project's website homepage as the be all and end all. They might do a little bit of research. They might read the utility of a project, but not actually chase up whether that utility is actually genuine utility or a pipe dream. And so we have to base our research based on where the most demand will come into the space. And the market has fortunately for us provided us enough information so far into these general areas of demand. And I've done a lot of research onto them and provided it to you completely free here on the channel, of course. Where the DGENs are most interested for this cycle is interoperability, gaming, AI, D-PIN, modularity, Web3 Layer 1, Layer 2 data availability, ZKPs, big data, and I would classify the nines in this category as well. But this is where most of the demand for this cycle will come in, which means you can pretty well pick any of the projects classifying themselves as an AI coin, a deep pin coin, interoperability, and have just at least a standard level of marketing and website and not look shady for them to do well. Most projects in this area will do well. But where the coins I've decided to sell out of are, they're way down here, Web2 Layer 1. It's the coins like Near Protocol, like ICP, like Flare, like Flux, like Render, like Solana, but they're focused on Web2. They're focused on the real world and gaining utility with real business connections and actually solving a real problem. Take XDC. These guys are you know, pretty much solving massive problems in a huge 
multi-trillion dollar market, which is trade finance. Hedera, it's a bit of an iffy one. We'll talk about this in a moment here. Uh, Quan is looking to connect banks, central banks, you know, financial institutions, the whole world together. Uh, XLM and XRP, of course, these guys are looking to do cross-border payments for both business to business and customer to customer. Algorand, very similar to HBAR, looking to basically provide an infrastructure for businesses in the real world. The reason why we have to focus on 2025 plays at Web3 Layer 1 projects is because this is where the DGENs are focused. This is what makes the most sense to them to want to buy. They aren't giving two craps about the reason why the BIS, or Bank of International Settlements, partnered and worked on a project in collaboration with Quant Network. This news, single-handedly, besides the ETF news, was the biggest news, in my opinion, of 2023. Hands down, insanity news. It's just like, you know, one of these projects like Neo Protocol having a direct partnership with Amazon, Google, Microsoft, all in one, announcing that at the one time. It was huge news. And then, of course, Quan pumped, but it pumped like 20%, if that, 15% on that news, and then just came down. Nothing actually happened. And then we compare this to a project like AOS Network, right? AOS is a, a deepen storage AI streaming project, all these big massive narratives, right? It ticks all these boxes. And yet, well, when I made this video on it two years ago, right? This was a website. It was crappy, looked like, you know, shit, basically, for lack of a better word here. It was focusing on only CDN or content delivery, right? So basically streaming. And then all of a sudden, bang, what happened? They put out a roadmap. Quarter 4 of 2023, the website updated. That was literally it. Refresh the website. Now it looks like this, right? Big buzzwords right on top. Okay, and guess what happened to the price? They're like 20x, okay? So you can very clearly see that nothing uh, you know, about this makes any logical sense. You can find utility that is actually being used. But what matters is hype. What matters is what I'm going to explain to you momentarily. Now, I've, of course, made courses on this. I'm not going to sit here and say, go down below and buy my courses. You can do what you want with your own money. All I'm saying is I've put a lot of time into this research. As a matter of fact, I have an hour and 20 minute video for free on the channel. I'll link it down below. You can watch and I touch on this actual method. And I don't want to hear, oh, well, AOS pumped because it gained traction and there was a whole bunch of transactions and whatever else you want to throw at me. It's not true. AOS is Block Explorer doesn't even have 1.5 million total transactions. I mean, I'm dumbed down. You compare this to a project like HBAR, right? With 1,100 TPS. TPS, transactions per second. This baby shoots up to three or 4,000 sometimes, right? And yet we can forget about AOS for a second. Fair enough. AOS is a smaller project, not quite in the same areas. Well, let's compare HBAR to Solana. Solana is currently a almost $79 billion market cap project over here, number five on the, on the slots. And HBAR is way down here at 35. Now, I'm not saying I'm a HBAR maxi at all. All I'm saying is think about this objectively for a second. Solana is focused heavily and only on Web 3 right now. And HBAR is 90% into Web 2. And look at the difference in terms of the size. Solana even launched later than HBAR. So, I mean, guys, it should be very apparent at this point that what determines the project going up in price has got nothing to do with real world utility or any utility at all. It's got to do with psychology, with the idea and whether or not the team is good enough to possibly make that happen. Now, Pumper Mentals pretty much just takes two very important things into consideration. Well, really three things. Number one, narratives. So if we go back over here, these are the narratives. And again, if you pick the narratives correctly and find projects like AOS that overlap a few of these important areas, AI, DPIN, uh, Web3 Layer 1 even, Big Data, uh, Storage, wherever storage is probably down here somewhere, and a few others. I mean, you start combining these things, you get a good mix of basically just, you know, where the money is generally flowing into the market. You know, these things blow up at a given time all at once. Like here, as a prime example with Cardano, all Layer 1 projects or Web3 Layer 1 projects had their all-time highs at the same time. And so if you pick a whole bunch of these, it's going to create more explosive potential. The further down this list you go, you have to look more towards something called the meme or the unique aspect that makes that project different or separate itself from its competition. It's not just that, right? So you might look at AOS, for example. AOS is a project that, you know, has instinctively a lot of I mean, mobility, because it's not just a deep end project, not just an AI project, it's also storage and streaming. You combine it, you know, a lot of these different narratives together and actually acts as its own meme. But really, like what separates AOS from other deep end projects, other streaming projects, 
you know, other storage or AI projects. The meme also depends on how easy the concept of the project is to understand. I've criticized projects before that are very complex. Probably one of the reasons why Quant doesn't do as well as it really should because people think it's just an ERC-20 token when it's not, okay? And that, of course, creates some of these barriers to entry, some of this apprehension to buying the token itself. You know, one thing you should be understanding by now is None of this has got to do with real application. It's all got to do with psychology, understanding what the more simple, basic crypto investor kind of wants to put their money into and just being one step ahead of them, right? I'm trying to trademark a term to make money from the degen. So those types of people, you have to just be one step ahead of those sort of people. So again, this is why something else called the popularity makes a lot of sense to me, which is my third step in this pumper mentals process which is looking for a booster right like over here popularity effects causes a sudden surge in the price of the project creating more eyes for it again prime example over here aos updating their website 20x in is there any huge robot events is there any history like old partnerships or announcements that really haven't been touched on for too long that might come up in the next one to two years of the bull run that could give a reason why people want to buy the token. This is important because projects are businesses and businesses need to make money and prosper. And to do that, you want to launch your biggest events and updates in the bull run. That's why projects postpone their launch in a bear market until the launch of the bull run. It is easy, very quick marketing completely for free. All they have to do is launch their token. And so in this video, where I actually spoke about the reasons why I was selling these old coins. Again, I didn't use the word bad old coins or crap old coins. These are all quality old coins. I spoke about doubling down on Neo Protocol, Mina, and Multiverse X. I spoke about buying Pith, Flux, Manta, Alt Layer, and Beam. I've crossed these out because I decided not to buy these. I wish I bought Beam, just didn't have enough money at the time. Selling. I decided to sell all my XLM. I decided to sell only 50% of my quant. I have recently, as of a few days ago, sold all of my quants and my XDC. I decided to keep Algorand, Casper, and HBAR. I have since sold these two, and I've kept my HBAR. Hedera is the only project that can classify as one of these coins right now that I have kept, one of these Web 2 Layer 1s. And the reason is... And I've made a video on this recently, right? I'm buying 50,000 HBAR because of this. I went and bought a whole bunch more, right? Is strictly because HBAR is pivoting towards Web3. They are a very smart team. And, you know, there was about $400 million of ecosystem grants that they gave themselves and, you know, their foundation to push the Web3 growth, which is, again, a very clear indication they know what they have to do to grow. This isn't some sort of fundamentals, you know, degen crypto guy, random dude theory. I've spoken to many founders who use these buzzwords, mimetics, narratives. This is why I've constructed this theory. It makes a lot of sense. And it's all, again, built on this, uh, you know, this whole psychology side of things. I mean, why do you think projects like AOS, and these aren't the only people, of course, this is the whole entire industry, have in their reports 2024 becoming the year of DPIN and then other projects claiming the year of AI and all these projects just throwing these buzzwords onto their homepage? Well, it makes total sense. What's the first words that come off on their website? In order of what might be the most popular, DPIN and then AI. So it's very apparent this is the way the teams are focused. Because again, this is just simply free, easy marketing. And so on this video I posted on the February the 2nd, let's see how these are so far performing. Near Protocol up about 2.3x, Mina is about break even, Multiverse X 13%, Pith 2.3x, Flux 2.3x, Manta is even, Alt Light 50%, Beam is 200%, and all the coins I was looking to get rid of and have gotten rid of, XLM 18%, Quant 23, XDC 9, Algo 66, best performing asset over here, uh, Casper 11% and HBAR 57%. And now again, keep in mind, a lot of these projects are down from the recent highs. So it goes against everything I've taught you over the period of time to just look at the trading history and just look at this and think to yourself, oh, the project hasn't moved. That's why I'm going to sell my altcoins. Please don't do that. Because again, what I like to teach on the channel here is being like a sniper, being someone who's, you know, buys and waits for the narrative to pop off and not be the person who buys on the hype train, okay? You don't want to be doing that. But the reason why I sold these old coins, and I'm now moving into stronger narratives here, is because there's likely going to be more pumpamentals. And given that, I can achieve my multiples quite easily, right? These Web2 Layer 1s really haven't had their time to shine yet. For the case of Quant, interoperability hasn't really been a big narrative so far. This will come in time, but 
There is a few more reasons that kind of support this theory, i.e. the lengthening cycle. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's probably going to be too much to explain in just this video. And I mean, I've done this over the last three videos anyway. So all that to say is that if we were going to summarize this in the most simplest way possible, on average, the coins I've bought into has gained about 67% and the average sales about 25% again. This is all slightly down. If we looked at this a few days ago or a couple of weeks ago, buyers would still be higher, but it would be about two or three X and sales would be about maybe a two X, something like that. Okay. So there's definitely a level to this, but I guess the premise remains the same, right? They've obviously been outperformed by the coins I've moved into. So look, I'm not telling you to sell the old coins in this narrative. I think Web2 Layer 1 projects are going to do well. It's just that if you're in XDC, for example, and this is my personal opinion, this isn't financial advice. The reason I sold XDC was simply because I am looking for about a 15X. It was before a 30X, right? So when I sold these, I was still looking for a 30X. And I thought to myself, at the price I bought XDC in that, there was no way XDC was likely going to 30X in this cycle. Do I think XDC, Casper, Algorand, XLM, uh, Quant, do I think they'll 10, 15X from these prices? Yes, I think they will. Do I think, again, I would 30x, which was my original target? No, okay? Now, I'm looking for anywhere about a, a 10 to a 15x, really, simply because I've been able to put more money into the market than I first thought of. And that's just allowed me to buy these more pumpamental altcoins, which will allow me to basically just achieve my goal in a much safer manner. It's all about being safe. I mean, the fact that I sold Quant, and I told you all how much of a bull I was on Quant, I think I've got like... 30, 40 videos on the channel of Quant should tell you all why no one should be married to their bags. HBAR is my number one holding. I will sell HBAR tomorrow if something bad came out about the project. I don't care how I make my money. I just want to make my money. Point blank, period. No offense to you. If you love these coins, it's just simply business. So guys, with that being said, look, I hope you have enjoyed this unorthodox video. I get it. Probably a lot of hate on the comments down below, but it's a part of the game, right? It's a part of investing. So thank you all. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.